Hello Technology Grace here and I am back with lesson 5 on how to create exe files out of batch files so please stay tuned and enjoy. If you guys haven't checked out my previous 4 tutorials on how to program in batch I highly suggest you guys go and check it out, links will be in the description. It was about a year ago that I started making these batch tutorials and I didn't intend it to be a big series. I intended it to be actually fairly small, but I got such a good response that I ended up making four more, uh, three more episodes and I got so many emails that I decided, you know what, it's really time to continue the series. So uh, today we're going to be looking at how to program in um, batch and more importantly we're going to be looking at how to convert batch files into EXEs. And I have a few more lessons planned out so please stay tuned for that. Uh, anyways, let's let's convert some batch files here. So the reason why you're going to want to convert files is let's say you have a finished batch file and you want to share it with a community or a friend, uh, but you don't want them to open up the batch file and either look at the code or maybe even edit the code. Uh, you can convert it into an exe, an executable file, and that way people can just simply right click on it and say edit and look at your code and then edit it. Um, executable files are actually what most programs use. For example, here I have uTorrent. If I right click on it, go to properties, you can see that the uh, the program is actually utorrent.exe, so it's a compiled exe file or executable file, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so we have my simple batch program here. It simply says hi and then bye and then closes. Uh, perfect. So let's um, go and download this application from the links in the description. It's called bat to exe converter, and it's a nice little GUI um, converter. So it converts batch files into exes. So here we can choose our batch file right here. Choose what we want to save it as. Uh, here we can choose a few different options. Um, so for example, if you want to keep the application visible, so if you want it to show up on the screen, you can say visible, or you can have it invisible running in the background so that CMD window doesn't pop up. You can also choose the working directory from either the current directory or the temporary directory. We can choose to delete temporary files on exit or we can leave them. We can encrypt this uh, program with a password, so they'll need a password to run it. You can choose this box right here. And basically what this says, they have a pop-up saying, do you want to run this program as administrator? And then you can press yes. Uh, sometimes you need code that needs to be run as, uh, as administrator to have uh, elevated privileges. And this is where that, that part comes in. Uh, we'll leave it on just for this example. Uh, you can overwrite existing files and you can add a decompiler. If we go over to include here. This is actually a cool feature. We can actually include other programs or files inside our batch file. So let's say we wanted one batch file that extracts a whole bunch of files on your desktop. You can actually include all those files here, and then your batch file can actually put it on the desktop. Or let's say you wanted a program that calls, let's say, a really fancy shutdown command, uh, but that shutdown command is only on your computer, and you want to give this program to everyone else. You don't want to go and say, here's a batch file, you need to download this program and put it in this directory for it to work. You can simply include that fancy shutdown command inside this, and then uh, your batch program can actually use that. If that doesn't make sense, you can just play around with it. Here we can change the uh, version information, apparently, and the icon uh, file. So here I have a simple icon uh, .ico file on my desktop. If you want to make an ICO, you can simply go and Google it on the web. Uh, you can make PNGs into ICOs really easily. It's basically the standard icon file format. Uh, if we go to program settings here, we can change language or we can change all our settings back to the default settings. And all the settings are stored in the settings file uh, that is right beside your bat.exe converter. So next time you open it up, it'll remember that you're, uh, which program you're converting to and it'll keep all your settings, uh, settings the same so you don't have to set them up every single time. Anyways, if we press compile here, it will compile our program onto the desktop. You can see right here, test one, and you can see that little bit of administrative that's that, that shield there. So if you open it up, it'll say, do you want this uh, program to make changes to your computer? Basically, it's saying, do you want this program to run as administrator? So we can press yes, and that's due to this little check mark right here. Here it says hi, bye, and then closes. So if we right click on this, uh, we edit in notepad, you can see that this thing is definitely not readable. You can't change it, you can't look at it, you can't even see any variables. Uh, if I were to look at your like variables, so let's say you have a password variable which is not very secure, I can take programs and extract this and kind of uh, monitor this um, exe and I can actually find your variable. So it's not 100% 100 um, secure, but the standard user will not be able to read any of your coding. They definitely will not be able to convert exes back into batch files. Uh, now that's cool and everything. But here on Technology Crazy, we like to take things a step further. So I actually did some searching and I found a much cooler program too that uh, allows you to convert batches files into exe files and it does it pretty fancily. So here we have advanced batch.exe converter. 
uh, version 2.83 and I'll have links in the description basically this is a converter as well as a uh, compiler and a editor so you can actually edit your batch code inside this program and then it will export it to exes and the cool thing about this is it allows you to add some extra commands into your batch programs that are not norm normally natively inside windows so for example let's make a simple batch program here that browses for uh, let's use this command right here so this one will allow you to use the windows dialog to browse for a folder and then it will store it in the variable result so let's insert that cmd command or it's not really a cmd command it's a custom command and here we can do echo and let's echo that result just like that and let's pause so now if we uh, save this as a batch file like that save it and then we execute or we save it uh, exe file here test.exe overwrite it sure uh, and here we have the same um, options we can run it as administrator run it invisible version uh, embedded files passwords icons everything the same as the other program basically and here we can build the exe so here it is right there and if i run it uh, you can see here it asks us for a folder and i can select any folder for example let's choose my contacts folder press ok you can see that it actually stores that under um, this variable right here. So it adds some extra commands. It takes CMD to or batch files to the extreme. I know uh, you can only go so far with batch files, but it's a, it's a cool program. I highly suggest you guys going in and checking out. Uh, not only does it give you cool commands, it also allows you to build some GUI programs too. And I know that sounds crazy to have GUI batch programs, but if, you're, if you look, for example, uh, let's look at their uh, fancy animation one. Uh, and let's save this as test.exe and build it. So over here, if you run it, you can see this little animation in batch and it's pretty cool. So you can add that to your batch programs. If you want to make your own, you can go to this graphic wizard here and you can actually like, draw uh, these really cool animation things. So it's really cool. Go and check it out. I guess that concludes this tutorial. So please stay tuned for the next one. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Links will be in the description. And I guess that's all from Technology Crazy. Goodbye.